So today's uh, Dave Dye is coming in. Yeah, Economist Special today, part one of Dave Dye, because we know that this is going to go on for a while, right? Yeah. This is going to be a good... You know, otherwise, we'd, I think we'd have a couple of hours out of Dave Dye. I quite like your dominant attitude there. Hand out, we are doing this as an Economist Special, which is a very good idea. Management mode. <laughs> Mate, you're the man. I mean, there's so much stuff he sent over. Yeah. And you know it, you kind of going, it will be ridiculous. It'll be like two and a half hours. People will be sat on their trains, not going to work. They'll... <laughs> If there were people in self-isolation, it would be perfect, right? Yeah. Actually, this is made for that, right? Well timed. <laughs> Should we do a two-week special? <laughs> <laughs> Coronavirus special. So, yeah, I mean, Dave, God, blimey. I'm, I'm known from a distance, actually, but I've never actually sat really with him and chatted stuff through, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know him well, a bit better. He said on the email, he's running here straight from a pitch, so... Yeah, um, oh, hopefully he gets it, because it will yeah. be all sort of a bit frazzled otherwise. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he's won, they've just won... I mean, he's just done so much great work, won so many pencils, it's, like, uh, amazing. Speaking of winning pencils, you won a... Didn't you win something no. for The Economist oh. once? You'd, Are we going to bring this up? Did you... You didn't <laughs> actually work on The Economist, though, did I've you? I've never worked on The Economist. You won a pen? Oh, uh, right. You've got to tell everyone about that. Ages and ages and ages ago, when I wanted to get into advertising, there was a competition. You could write a headline for The Economist... And if yours were chosen, you won a Mont Blanc pen. Not any pen, a Mont Blanc pen, yeah. So I, I sent loads in. I think this was just after I'd left Watford College to try and get in the industry. And uh, yeah, one of them got chosen. So I've got a Mont Blanc pen. Not a pencil for economists. Do you, do you know who picked the line? Um, Dave Abbott, clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you want to know the line? Yeah, go on. I never read The Economist. No, no, it's not that one. <laughs> um, it said the decision, uh, decision makers make the same decision every week. Mate, boom. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Don't give it the I wonder if it's in the one of it's in the pile of rejects. We could ask Dave. Yeah, shall we? Yeah. Well, oh, that'd be good. Hello, Dave. Welcome to Behind the Billboard. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Leave a little gap there. Yeah. <laughs> we could just keep going. Keep thanks. Going. Um, thanks for legging it here from your pitch. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to ask who it was because that would be unprofessional, but I'm yeah. hoping you're smiling a bit, which must mean it went all right. Or it's over, I... that's why. Yeah, yeah. That's okay, over. that's a very good way to see it. Um, we really appreciate you coming. It's It's been long overdue. We've had many people on the show already, and they talk about you in such glowing terms. And Dan and I are going, who's this Dave Dye guy? We've got to get him in. So... Obviously, we were going to get you in. Um, it's been a bit delayed, but we're we're really happy to have you here today. It's lovely to be here. And we are going to focus solely on The Economist because there seems to be quite a lot to go at. A lot of our... We, we've touched upon it on many of the episodes, um, so we thought this could be an Economist special, folks. Um, and then we may have a part two where we'll mm-hmm. do sort of Adnans and Adidas and okay. all that sort of stuff. Um, but I was just wanting to say last night I was going through DNAD you have 159 entries I think which is quite a record I'm not sure whether Tony Davidson will claim he has more we can have a little we can have a DNAD off with that but your amazing body of work has been created at many agencies in town but also a lot of your own agencies yeah which, we're, we're, are we on number four at the moment no we're on number three but they've uh, had okay. different names I mean okay. I think one really good one is probably better than a number oh. uh, but at least think, you have one uh yeah, it's the third one. I think we, it depends how you count them. Uh, we left Abbott Mead to start CDD Tester. Within a month, <laughs> that was disbanded to become CDD. So you can count that as one or two. Uh, I'd count that as one. And what does that become? Shop? And then when I left, ah. that became shop. Okay, right. So I'd count those three as one. Okay. Uh, and then Die Holloway Murray is the next one. And then we changed its name to try and be cool and funky to Hello and People. people. Uh, so I'd still count that as one. Okay, because I was being change. a bit thick, thinking, God, he did that Die Holly Murray one, and then there's a Hello People after but it yeah, was a set. Right. Right. New partners came in and we changed Gotcha. Yeah. Well, also, the one other thing we want to mention uh, is your brilliant blog and your own brilliant podcast, which uh, I have to sort of say, um, fess up, that I quite often go on to just do research for really? our That's guests. That's what it's for. Yeah, it's for. so I did quite a lot of research on you on your own blog, which is incredibly helpful. So thank you for that. Um, well, it feels like you've been resource. part of the podcast for a long time because we've 
I think we've mentioned you in every single episode. It's kind mm. of the. I think there's a. I think there's probably a bingo game going on with listeners where they have to do a shot every time we mention your Just name. Keep that going. It? See how far you can go with it. <laughs> <laughs> if we say your name hundred times, there's going to be a load of drunk creatives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Winning. Um, one of the first questions we ask is the recent billboard. So you know the stuff that you've seen recently that you think is 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 kicking ass. Yeah, uh, kicking ass. Uh, <laughs> uh, I it's funny, I listened to Mark's uh, this morning, actually, and oh. uh, he said there's a bit of a renaissance going on, which I think there are. There do seem to be more uh, good billboards than, than there were, certainly a few years ago. So I, I really like the Oakley stuff, and Ooh. it's interesting to me Ooh. because lots of people yeah. are forever on Twitter. Maybe it's just my feed, but they're ever on Twitter hammering it, and you think, yeah. well, it stands out, it's funny. I now know about Oatly. I didn't before. What do you, you know? What do you want? Yeah. Why not pick on some of the boring ones that you can't remember who they were for? Um, so I like that. I think that's great. Um, I love the Spotify ads that who what why did. Yeah. I think they're great. That's um, yeah. yeah, those two instantly spring to mind. There'll be some other bits and pieces. The only thing's quite interesting because uh, they're all around Shoreditch where I'm working at the moment, and there's yeah. one. Of, taken over a whole wall uh, like a mural then there's like paid for posters there's all sorts going on and I just I sort of in a slightly snobby way wanted not to like them you know because I'd heard they're in a house and all that kind of, but yeah. they're really they just got me and I was just yeah. sort of going yeah I find they're quite funny and they're quite well they're, they're well written I remember it yeah. you know all so the things you want from yeah, an ad yeah what was what, what's to not like so I think yeah I'm with you on that I'm, re- I'm pleased you said that someone has called me out about and um on it and said, what are you talking about? They are absolutely abysmal, Steve Gash. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but Steve, you're still my mate, Steve. Yeah. I won't hold it against you. So. But I don't know, you know, it's interesting what people expect. I, I mean, it's like, you know, when you talk about good football, people end up criticising Ronaldo or Messi, saying he's not as good as Maradona, rather than all of the mediocre people underneath. And it's sort of the same to me. Everybody, there's nobody who's not aware of that campaign. Mm. Mm. And it looks like people just having fun, just reminding you of it. I don't think you have to give people a lecture. Yeah, if you've got a billboard space. Yeah, I think the, the Spotify thing, uh, maybe it, it really appeals to me, maybe because it is sort of directed it's, at us, but yeah. it's it's just unbelievably brilliant copywriting, isn't it? It is like you were talking about the Renaissance. It is a bit of a throwback. The, the lines are just so well crafted, and they're they're just they hit every time. And yeah. they're very short. Yes. Yeah. And they've Spotify have already. I suppose the campaign. We we want to talk about Spotify at some point in the series. Is the the first campaign they did. Before that, I think it was an in-house campaign, wasn't mm. it? Which mm. was, I think, would sort of set the ground. Which was great. When yeah, they used data. Exactly. It's the best so, use of data. Yeah. Yeah, probably I think it's a great point. use of yeah. data. It's one of my favourites. So um, I think Spotify now they're probably out there. There's a one to watch for you know great billboards. Yeah, yeah I think that if you going back to what you're saying about Oatly, there's. I don't think moves on that, Dan. Do you like that? There's nothing jiggling about. There's no smoke wafting uh, around. No, no, no. They did do a special on the digital stuff. They did a. They did a. They only took the downside of an escalator and said the line was something about research tells us that we'll sell more oat milk on the down escalator. So we've only bought the down escalator. There Um, was those. Sorry. And the milk jiggled about a bit. Oh, 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 there was a jiggle then. But that you know. Comparing Oatly to their competitors, you know, I don't know. There's, is there another oat milk brand out there who's advertising an outdoor? And I mean, you know, it's, do, do you compare it to all other billboards? Do you compare it to their sector mm. or what? As it's a both. I mean, I think we can't come up with another oat milk. I, I can't. I don't know any more oat milks. Do you? No. no. Uh, so that's pretty good. Yeah, they did. We did talk a little bit about Oasis, how they used, they were doing those yeah. posts. Anti advertising, yeah. advertising. They, yeah. they were very well written as mm. well. Like that, I kind of there's, I think there's room for that. You know, because if you haven't got that much to say, you know, entertain yeah, us. Have a know. bit of fun. Yeah. Um, and just the 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 medium in general. So I mean, you briefly touched on it, um, and we were kind of in agreement with with Mark as well on that. There is a bit of a renaissance in in outdoor at the moment. Obviously, it's a the landscape's changed considerably in the in the in the duration of our careers, um, as we talked, it's, you know, it's becoming more digital. It's jiggling about a bit more. Yes. Um, has it been? Has it always been one of your favourite advertising mediums to to or canvases to play on? Or yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, it's like if you've got all of the different forms of communication and you put it, and you had a big triangle from wide at the top going to a point, 
you'd sort of at the top of that triangle would be content and then probably films because you've got loads of bits to play with you've got editing and cinematography and music and other stuff when you get right down to a billboard you've got nothing you know ideally you'd use five or six words or no words if you can and an image and unlike lots of other things like tv and uh press or digital is you've got a captive audience you know with uh, posters you've got to make someone turn their head you've got to literally physically make them turn their head and look at your thing um, and all the others even if you're watching tv you might decide not to look at that or to turn it over mm. but with um, outdoor you've got to make them turn their head so i like the uh difficult it's a diff it's difficult to do mm. you know to mm. not use many words or one image or to distill it down it's the most distilled down um form of communication i think and now it's the most i'd argue it's the most public because mm. everybody's watching different tv channels um obviously everyone gets fed different things but that's one of the few things that you you know with oatly i could mention that to my mum or to my son and he might know it whereas if i mentioned that on tv or on that something that come up on twitter he's got no chance that it, mm. he's seen the same thing. Yeah, I guess that's because I think in the certainly in the social space everything has become so personalized yeah, so to tailored. the stuff that you're searching for that you you're not going to be uh, chances are you're not going to be served the same thing as as no. your son or you can't skip a 48 sheet poster no, or a, a one thing I thought there you quite the public thing's quite interesting because um Anna from um mother was in last week and she was saying this brilliant thing that at the end of the road at mother there's a there's a billboard so whenever they had uh, Coke as a client, they would they, they, they always had that on yeah, their, yeah, their schedule. Yeah. So she said it's quite interesting. Creative teams, if you did an ad for Schweppes or Coke, you know it would be at the end of the road yeah. and every creative at Mother would be walking past it. Yeah. And so she said, it, although it's, it's exciting, it's also quite nerve-wracking. Um, nerve-wracking, because yeah. if, you, if you cock it up, yeah. it's, there's nowhere to no, hide. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like, you can hide a bit more behind the other mediums, can't you? Yeah. Well, so it's like uh, if you've ever done a cinema ad and you sit in the cinema and watch it, it's absolutely terrifying. Because yeah. it's supposed to be funny. Yeah, and you yeah. sit through it and nobody laughs. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I like that. I also think that um, you know most advertising it's a, it's, has its most effect when you know that lots of other people are seeing that ad or that message. So you think everybody seems to think that's cool or that's good or that whatever. So the fact that you know a lot of other people have seen and taken that in is a big part of it. So when it becomes mm -hmm. too tailored... You know, it loses a lot, I think, because you don't know what other people are taking in. Mm. So. Yeah. It, it's interesting to talk about that kind of the the poster is the most distilled version of your concept or of communication. The, yeah, yeah, of communication. That's there's no, there's yeah, there's no the other form of communication that has less bits. Yeah, it's the I think. it's the idea in its purest form, yeah. isn't it? It's the, you know, you, once you've, you've, well, actually, that's what happens, right? We sketch it out and we stick a, we, yeah. we stick a headline and a logo. It's on funny it. where where I'm working at the moment. There's um, the old street roundabout. There's these four enormous digital billboards on the yeah, roundabout, yeah. and um, this is going to be a good segue into Economist. But there's some Economist ones there the other day, mm. which are really good. And I'd actually look forward to seeing them after I'd come back from the swimming pool to see which one it was up. So there's one with all the words jumbled up. Yeah. There's one about um, serious listening, say something intelligent. You, know, you, you just, I just like to see them. So then they've gone down now, and then there's these ones. That, that there's, it's and no, no disrespect to the people who wrote these ads, but there's one for BT, and it's got so much stuff on it. I, I've got, an, I've got a headache looking at it. And then that goes off, and there's one for Vodafone, which is another kind of. There's a headline and a subline, and, and it's really weird because it felt like it's the same space. Mm -hmm. Um, and the first thing was just so witty, clever, clear. I got it, concise. and I looked for it. Yeah, yeah, concise. And the other one just felt like it, uh, when we talked to Anna about um, the posters in São Paulo were taken down because they were deemed to be polluting um, the environment. And I yeah. sort of looked at those and thought, "There's nothing there for anyone." Well, uh, do you know what? This is the thing. We always ask people their their favourite recent billboards. Maybe we should ask them their. <laughs> The recent shit they've seen well, now. No, that, <laughs> maybe their thing would never end. <laughs> think, yeah, you'd have to change your duration. Yeah, that drive yeah. time. But maybe that's the reason the good stuff stands out, right? Is yeah, there I mean, is that's a lot true. Of, that's a good point. There's a I don't think there's a ton of. I mean, it's not like a golden age for outdoor, but there's the odd sign that you know things are, might be changing. Mm. I think. But yeah. I mean, I, I you know I think Mark said the same thing. Is that you know every time I get on the tube, it's just a sea of nothing at all you know occasionally there might be some but but they used to be like 
art galleries. You know, you would see amazing photography and thinking and all sorts of things. And now it's just a bunch of words against the colour. Yeah. Uh, lots of words, not even five words. But And so going back to what you're saying about kind of sitting in the cinema and watching one of your cinema ads, do you remember the very first billboard that you did and you went out to see it <laughs> go up? Um, I think... I think it was when I was at an agency called Edwards Martin Thornton. It was for Apple Ties. Um, and for it, they'd sponsored a bike race, and I'd ripped off and reshot the Picasso thing of a bike seat with handlebars like a cow. Right. I have no idea why. It looked quite cool. I've no idea why that, what the link was between the Apple Ties drink, Picasso's <laughs> cow. Obviously, <laughs> it was a bike turtle, so I know why it linked to. Th- but I think it was that. I don't remember seeing it up. Uh, the only ones I can remember seeing up were the Economist ones, funnily enough. Uh, I don't know why that is. That's perhaps they just had a bigger media spend or more around central London where I worked. Yeah. I don't know, but. Well, we want to talk about uh, the Economist today. Obviously, we, we touched upon it, but the, um, you know, you had an incredible tenure on the Economist. And it was quite weird, actually, just saying for quite a short amount of time, in a way, relatively. Yeah, two or three years. Yeah. yeah. Like, and it, oh, I don't know. It feels like it is one of the most famous billboard accounts ever, and still going strong. You did conservatively over 100 ads you know it, it was an incredible period i wonder whether you could just set the scene for us when you arrived yeah. at abermead from ddb what was the scene at the time well i suppose i'm trying to think you know when did you... i get there 99 so i think it was probably 10 years old at the time the economist right. it had gone through you know when it first started it was amazing and uh, david abbott wrote most of them and they were great and they'd win all the awards um and then richard and john did some they sort of uh broadened out the territory so they'd have a visual one a keyhole yes uh, which i think there was a bit of resistance of running that apparently richard said initially <laughs> and then they did a green from one. the client uh, i think from david Haber. Right, okay. initially i think there was a feeling that the economist is a words you know is a written campaign mm. and, but it, it ended up happening one offense in the end um and then they'd done, I mean, like lots of creators, you try and put your own stamp on it, which can be a bit selfish, but often you're just sort of pushing the territory a bit further. Uh, and then there were some really good ones that were like the green one, which I think is full of surprises. Yeah. There was one that said half the world is, no, not half the world, what would it be? Two Three thirds of the two world? Thirds I can't remember the one. numbers, but yeah. anyway, a certain amount was covered by water, the rest by the economy, which yeah. was really good, and it introduced colour. And then, it, to me, anyway, it seemed to gradually tail off. So they were all pretty good. But I think with anything, once you know, they become familiar... I mean, I remember seeing The Economist ads when I would drive in at... Uh, I don't know where I would have been then, wherever I was. Mm. And they were very, very... And this is something that gets lost over time. Is they were very, very punky to just have a bright red poster with mm. just, mm. you know, five words, and it was just weird at the time. Nobody did that. Yeah. You know, if you look at all the posters around that period, they'd all have big luxurious photographs and a little bit of type in the corner, or they they wouldn't just have a flat colour, and just words. It was like punk. Yeah. You know, whereas yeah. now they look very uh, the opposite. Of, what's the opposite of punk? Mm. Classical. Classical. Conformist, yeah. Well, they look uh, sensible and yeah. normal. Yeah. Whereas then they looked very out there, and it's hard to sort of capture that or, or understand that now. Anyway, but then gradually it seemed to me that, it you know, it was Abbott yeah, doing them, and obviously they were really good, and then it was an open brief, and then there'd be good ones every so often. But it seemed like, you know, by the time I got there in 99, my own personal point of view is... I was slightly, I thought, it's brilliant, but there's a part of me that thinks when I drive down the road and I see a big red billboard coming up, you think, oh, they're going to say something witty. Mm. And obviously over 10 years, you lose a bit of power in that Mm. uh, through familiarity. And then there's a question of what executions are bought and whether they're as good as they used to be or whatever. So, you know, I'd come from uh, Simon's Palmer, for example, and... The idea was if you were on Nike, you would you would try and push things all the time. You wouldn't think, well, that's it. Which which white letters are we going to put on the red background now? Mm. You would always be trying to push something. So when I got up, I thought, got there. I thought it'd be good to sort of um, push it on a bit, which sounds mm. uh, 
When you got there, can I just quickly ask? Yeah, go on. Because I love timelines and titles and stuff. So when you got there, were you... Were you an art director, part of team with with Sean, or were you deemed as creative director in the account? Both. Okay. So, and were you allowed to do both? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I went with Sean, and I mean, initially, what happened is when I first got there, I hope they don't mind me saying this, but uh, Peter and Tony invited me in to judge the Economist work for we just got there for the next batch. Right. I don't know if I've said so this Peter on my, Suter Peter and, Suter and Tony Cox. Tony and I Cox. don't know whether I'd said this on my podcast if I have it. But anyway, so we sort of three of us sat around looking at the floor where all the ads were. And then what would happen is there'd be 100, 150 ads. And then Peter or Tony would, would put one on the floor. And then everybody would look at each other right. for a reaction. Tony was quite new there. I was brand new there. And there was a slightly awkward vibe. It's like, who's going to say... Yeah, that's good. First, or was it no? A it was a and were they were they thing. complete ads? Or were they kind no, of no? There would be a combination. It depends how people would present them. Some right, would be okay. scribbles. Some would be possibly made up. I mean, it's only, it only takes ten seconds to make them up, um, or little drawings if it was visual. So we kind of went through the pile, and I was, and I thought Peter and Tony seemed like they would be very polite, and deferential to each other. So. If this is how it seemed to me, it might not be right. But so if Peter said, that's quite interesting, Tony go, it is, isn't it? That is quite, that's how it seemed to me. And it just made me feel awkward. So I was, you know, I probably like two. Right. And, uh, and it seemed like, so, and I just felt a bit awkward. I felt slightly mean spirited and slightly like, I don't, I just feel a bit uncomfortable being yeah. there. No, I don't really like that. I don't really like that. Anyway, so for whatever reason, perhaps they picked up on that bad vibe that I was giving out um, they said look why don't you be the creative director on The Economist to, uh, and you right. do it yeah. so I thought great you know obviously it's a fantastic campaign uh, interesting having heard Paul Belford talk about it on here mm. I, y- you sort of come at it uh, slightly schizophrenically in the sense that it's a big famous campaign so you don't want to touch anything. In fact, I wouldn't even consider judging it, really, other than what the ideas were, because it was so established. But mm. on the other hand, you know, for example, Dave, when I got Dave Wakefield in to work at Abbott Mead, mm. he was horrified by the font, and it seemed sacrilege, because you think, <laughs> well, it's just the Economist campaign. How can you start? He went, oh, it's all squashed together. It's mm. horrible. It's look at this, look at that. And it seemed really weird that someone, you know, 10 years in, someone would... What, having won every conceivable award, someone would go, oh, it's horrible. Right. So I wouldn't have... So from that perspective, from an art direction perspective, I would never have considered even judging it because it was like such a mm. familiar thing. But anyway, so when it got handed over to me, um, I thought, God, how do you make it better? So I thought, I'm going to do what we did at Simon's Palmer. I'm going to uh, firstly not get people to slip their work under the door or hand it in and then it be judged in sort of secret behind closed doors and then what would happen a memo would go around is it would say these are the eight that have been bought so you wouldn't necessarily know you're in the shortlist or your work was presented from memory you would be told they bought x y and z so i thought well i'll make it like simon's palmer i'll have a board so i've got some boards put up in my room and i'll do what we did at simon's palmer which is the they used to run eight four times a year so I'll pin eight up, the eight best ones. If they're rubbish, they're rubbish, but at least that's where we are. So, And then the idea is that anybody can come in at any point and they can see where we are and they can think, hmm, that's a bit rough. I'm sure we can do better than that or maybe there should be a visual one or, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, so I'd, and then the other thing I thought I'd do is I would talk to the... I would talk to the people, they'd bring their work in and I'd say what I thought rather than just give them the result. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, I want a bit more visual. You know, I want of the eight, I want at least two or three visual and perhaps, I can't remember what I would have said, but I would mm. have had some view on what they would. And then, uh, or I'd say, I don't think that's good because of this, or I think it could be more X, Y, Z. So, but I talked to them about it, mm. creative directed, really. It's very, um, and that all made sense um, until. You know, a few, people, few of the younger people come in and you go through their stuff and you think, 
I don't like that. I think this. I think that. With all my fancy mm. opinions, and then uh, I looked up one day, and there was Richard and John standing at their door with a bunch of scribbles on layout pads. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I thought, oh fucking What's hell, that what a system! Yeah. What a stupid fucking system! Now I've got to go through Richard and John's work, who've been working on it ten years. Probably won a number of pencils on it. Did the first visual one, the first color one. And I've got to now go through the work <laughs> in real time and tell them what's wrong with it or what's right with it. Uh, Sounds quite daunting. That's awkward. If there was another door in my room, I would have yeah. backed out of that yeah. and thought, oh, it's just too awkward. <laughs> Done. Um, but obviously, uh, to sort of swallow hard and think, oh, fuck it, I'm to just <laughs> do it. Uh, because also, I know I wouldn't be able to just say, oh, yeah, they're all fine, because obviously that's very wimpy and uh, no use at all. So I'm glad to sort of... So anyway... They couldn't have been more lovely. I can't really particularly remember the results. There's mm. almost certainly some I wasn't keen on, but they were great. It was sort of fine. Um, but anyway, so we would build up the eight, and then generally there would be, uh, you know, people would work on it as and when through the year, really, but then generally there'd be sort of last-minute panics. Mm. So, you, so you had key intervals where you would present back to the economists each quarter. Yeah, so they would, they would say, you know, the campaign in April... Mm-hmm. You would get briefed, I can't remember now, but maybe a, 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 a two weeks, a month before the copy date. And then you'd be briefed every quarter on the right. next thing. I mean, the interesting thing for me is that the first time I sort of oversaw anything, they said, um, oh, we'll come and brief you on Tuesday. And I went, brief me? What do you mean? I know what hmm. a brief is. It's like you read it and you get cleverer and you're more interested enough. I've mm. seen it for the last 10 years. Well, well no, no, we always have a new brief, hmm. uh, which was interesting. And they, I mean, to be honest, the briefs always seem very similar to me. But they would write a new brief that would slightly shift each time. I don't know whether you can ever take that out from any of the ads over time because people would be working on those all year. Um but yeah, so I'd sort of build it that way. So it was, uh, they'd be all on my board. Um, and would you be chucking in your own ones because there was a gap or because it was open to everyone? So David Abbott can write one, you can write one. Was that the deal? Yeah, both. Yeah, uh, yeah obviously it's a, it's a difficult, um, it's sort of difficult in a way. Uh, obviously I really thought, you know, I thought it's great to work on the economy. So I didn't mm. want to, Possibly should have taken myself out of writing on it in a way, but why would you not want to do no. it? You know, but obviously it's difficult writing with one hand and approving with the other hand. Yeah. Um, but you seem to do quite well. I mean, in front of us we can see quite a few. Um, shall we talk about some of these? Or I mean, the other thing I was going to quickly ask was, yeah. and it was a bit back to Paul's Paul Belford's point about you come in as an art director. You know, you you write as well. I know, but. Um, you go. Where's my? Where's the place for me? It's it's a yeah, white words on a red background. So then, f- but then the keyhole one was a, a brilliant yeah. move on. So there is um, scope for it. Did you did you purposely go right? I want to move it on yeah. another notch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically, but then a lot of these are still in yeah. the same space. Well, basically, the, what happened is the first brief uh, because obviously, if you're in a creative department and a good one, you're unbelievably competitive. You're trying to win. You know, mm. so so I, in my head, I thought, you know, there there would be sort of some of the worst ones would be, you know, two or three word puns, and you think, oh, it's just a waste of time. And then you've had mm. all those brilliant ones. To me, things like uh, the edge of a conversation, the loneliest place on earth, yeah. might be the other way around. Yeah. Or um, would you like to sit next to you at dinner? Or yeah. there's things that are very psychological and make you think and they seem really good and then if you've got something next to it apologies to whoever wrote this and it says utter brilliance you think well it's a bit it's not as thoughtful or as Mm. good Mm. as the other ones Mm. um so anyway so i sort of thought it would be good to if i'm sort of gonna do it it would be good that every quarter it's possibly got its own vibe it's not just a bunch of red ones it's like so i found this thing in a in a magazine, not that they, they can find them anywhere, but a Venn mm. diagram, which was yeah. in Vanity Fair, and it just had a, uh, it's a funny little Venn diagram that had a red circle and then a blue circle, and I can't remember what was in it. And I thought, yeah. oh, that's quite it's like an economist. That could be an economist, yeah, that, yeah. that little yeah. diagram. A bit like, funny enough, when David Abbott 
apparently looked at the logo and thought it was like a poster. It was a bit like, well, that can be yeah. an economist ad. It looks exactly the same colour. It's a big bit of flak. What is there graphically? What's their campaign? It's a flat bit of red. It doesn't have to cover the whole page. You know, Richard and John have done colours before. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, let's have a go at doing some of those. Maybe we could do eight of those instead of eight red ones. Yeah. And then if we did, we'd get to do all of them rather yeah. than pitch in one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so completely selfishly. But... Um, so anyway, so I so with that example, I sort of having seen that, I then tried to write them, uh, and it was like some sort of Mensa test. So I was going, <laughs> right. so you've got that bit has to say reads the Economist, then you need something there, that's something else, and then you need something at the bottom is the combination of reading the Economist, and, and I was, just couldn't get my head around it at right, all. Right, right. I just it's it was like some weird. Yeah. Me- I just couldn't write any uh, that night anyway. So then I come in in the morning, said to Sean, got this idea, look, let's do a Venn thing. It's, it says, that one says reads The Economist, that one says something else, and then that bit is funny and makes sense of those. Yeah. Anyway, Sean being Sean, within a couple of hours, had written a couple that were really good. Uh, and then funny enough, when he'd written them, I could write them. I don't know whether he'd sort of expose the formula, because I thought I knew the formula before, but I couldn't do any until he'd done it, and then I pitched in some. Um, so anyway, so we got together those, so there'd be one like it's being handed over live in the room, which says, <laughs> being given a year to live, reads The Economist, and the little overlap in the middle says, worked out how to take it with him. Um, and we did, once you get into it, and you sort of find that little formula, we did like hundreds of those, you know, we did about 20 or 30. Oh, sorry, and to interrupt, were these after, sorry, because we're just looking these were at... Before. This was before the very first this. thing. Yeah, very first thing. Sorry, okay. Yeah. Again, get my timeline. So you've come in, you've gone, I'm going to have a go at this. Yeah. Discovered this b- very clever graphic visual technique. Yeah. Right, I'm with you. Yeah. So Sorry. this is it. We're taking it's over it. this. It's so we're going to take the <laughs> campaign, the essence of it, but we're going to do our version of it, which is going um, to freshen it up. Which and would you have to walk down the corridor to, to David Abbott's no, he, office he, and say, this is what I've done? No, because he was in and out at the time. He'd sort of just left and he'd come in and out. Right. So, uh, and was there a bit of you putting your that's you putting your stamp on it? That's oh, the, the not a bit. There was like most of it. <laughs> in that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, what well, it's well, that's what you've been brought in. That's for, what right? you know. You want to. It wasn't being horrible. Or, no. You just think, you know, if you look at the uh, Economist ads from that the previous year, there won't be many that come up without being rude there won't be many that come up in your podcast much mm. you know the ones that come up will be tim's jordan mm. you know abbott's you know dozen or whatever that you did richard and john's but it was sort of but the, know, the light bulb came up as well Belfast, the light bulb yeah, yeah, yeah which was good i mean there'll yeah. be but there won't be what i'm saying is um what i was going to say so you think is i did work it out at one point so it'd been going for 10 years so they would run eight every quarter which is What's that? Thirty-two a year. Yeah. Every time uh, a brief would go in, there would be between a hundred and two hundred ads. So in that department, what's that? Eight hundred a year mm. times ten. So it's eight. So conservatively, in that floor, those two floors of creative, there would have been t- what did I say? Eight thousand. Eight thousand yeah. post ideas yeah. been presented. So obviously, eight thousand in. Yeah. You think, God, it's getting hard. Have, they, have all the best ones been done? Yeah. Someone's done one on this, someone's done that, one on that. So you don't really know where it's going, whether you sort of should freshen it up or whether, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever. That's some odds, isn't it? It's 8,000 in and three hundred and maximum 320 out over that period. Yeah, that's right. So it gets, it gets tougher because yeah. you go, right, he's done that one about sitting at dinner. You can't go there. Yeah. He's done one about... Jordan, the name sounds like this, it's, so we can't do a name sounds like thing. Someone's done that, so you start to c- cross up all the areas, areas yeah. and well, you think, well, this opens it up to a whole new area. So, Plus, uh, we've written them, which is even better. And so, did, <laughs> once you've got your, you know, you, you and Sean got up and running with it, did you then go straight to the client and go, guys, I think we've got a new way in? No, what happened is that was all. <laughs> we sort of sold it all in internally, and it was all ready to go. I think there was a bit of. Um, slight anxiety should we be doing this you know they've come in and changed it a bit um so obviously i was would have been slightly oblivious to the should we change it i just think well, it's like that but it's a bit different and mm. you know freshens it up a bit. Yeah. um and then right at the 11th hour uh the ceo andrew robertson came in and said look we can't we can't do it 
we can't have that as the right. as the main campaign. Right. And I can remember exactly what he said, which sounded really pretentious at the time, but in retrospect, it wasn't as bad as it sounded. Which yeah. he said, like the red campaign is David's parting gift to the agency. Right. Okay. So, as someone who's just seemed like they'd had all their work canned at the eleventh hour, that sounded like a pretentious <laughs> <little> <laughs> nonsense, you know. Mm. Um, Difficult to swallow. So. Literally, it was like the day before, if my memory is, but it was a long time ago now. So, um, so he said, let's, let's figure out what we do. So what was decided is that, is that uh, we would run uh, that on cross tracks and tube cards and the Venn, diagram kind of, the Venn diagrams, yeah. so with cross tracks and things. And, the, and then we'd, we'd have more, uh, in fact, it couldn't have been the night before because we wouldn't have been able to hustle together. Mm. Or perhaps we we went to whatever had been presented and got the other stuff with, that had been presented that wasn't the van. I can't remember what we did, mm. but it's so anyway. So that got that was like became a sub pet campaign rather than it was going to be on all media for that whole period. Um, and then we we yeah we ran some other ads, red ads. Went back to red. Okay, so that's fascinating. I, I mean, this is about the whole point of this podcast is to get the story behind them. But because I, I remember seeing them thinking. I thought it was just a specific, they've just chosen some sort of little media to, you know, to try this out. Obviously, the red campaign is what's going on. That'll go on forever, blah, blah, blah. So it's quite interesting hearing that. Cause it, and uh, I, I thought they were incredibly well written and clever and witty and, and you know, just uh, obviously a bit beyond me because I'm not really an economist reader. But I, I, I thought they were great. And, but I didn't know any of that, Yeah, what you just said. So knowing that, and um, now you're thinking, right, I'm gonna to have to go back to the red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, is that because I'm sorry for the people who aren't obviously in the room? There's only three of us. We're looking at um, Dave's posters like E equals IQ squared. Uh, ever go blank at the crucial thingy? Lose the ability to slip out of meetings unnoticed and more. So were these then after that? Yeah. Well, you've got to think. How, for however many years I was there, I would be writing and overseeing every quarter. There'd be another opportunity to run. So. These would be, you know, sometimes we may have picked two that would be in the batch, sometimes one, sometimes three, I don't know. So these would have been from the various batches after that. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, so after that, it was stick to red. And then then also the next round, we had another view, which was, you thought, okay, so we've got to, it's got to be red. We can't you know, do what, what I'd wanted. So, uh, again, I'd got a... My uh, I gradually built up my eight uh, that I was sort of happy with, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and then I had an issue with Andrew again, who who came in. I don't know. Do you know Andrew Robertson? No. He's, like, he's, very, yeah, he's very. He's obviously what is he now? CEO of BBDO Global, I think. And he went right. God, he's he's very sort of can do, perky, right. upbeat. Right. You know what you're supposed to be when you see him. Yes. And he went, right, where is this the new stuff? I said, yeah. He went, great, great, excellent. When's that being shown? So I said, whatever, two, two days, whatever. Right. Brilliant, excellent, excellent. I said, look, very good, very good, good, uh, very good, very good. <laughs> and then, uh, excellent, great. And then he sort of looked at me and went, got no puns. I went, no, I'm not really, don't really like puns. <laughs> oh, God, that's just <laughs> sounding awful. Go on. I don't really like puns. It's not really my thing. He went, oh. But we always generally have one or two puns. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> so in retrospect, I should think, well, it's the boss. He wants some puns. But I thought, oh, I'm in charge of this. So right. He went, well, good to have a couple of puns. <laughs> I quite like the puns. It's a face-off, this is. Yeah, it, it was, it was it's like a far awkward. show sketch. Yeah. <laughs> he went, it'd be good to have a couple of puns. I went, hmm. <laughs> They went, I quite like the puns. I said, oh, oh, I <laughs> think yeah. I'm so he's slightly <laughs> rampant it up each time. I said, well, I said, I, I'm not really a fan of puns, to be honest. So then we're both <laughs> <laughs> looking at our shoes and yeah. looking at the wall, yeah. thinking, oh, where's this going? And he went, hmm. And then he sort of nudged me, come on, put a couple of puns oh, in there. Right. And I went, yeah. <laughs> 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 And he went, come on. <laughs> and I went, 
No, probably <laughs> night ponds. So it feels like one of those the twenty twelve or W twelve. Yeah, W one I. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, <laughs> the mockumentary. It was, it was awkward. I mean, I was probably you know I were older was at the time a young kid. You know, I I didn't really. I suppose now I'd think oh, it's the bloke who runs the company coming in, Sam got other puns. Get some puns out. I don't know yeah. whether I'd just go. I don't know, but I probably wouldn't just say no. <laughs> I'd probably try and talk to him a bit more. But I, I, at the time, I thought I don't like the pun ones. They're rubbish. They're no utter brilliance. Apologies to whoever wrote utter brilliance. Mm. Um, I think well, they they don't seem to be the good ones to me. So I thought if they want me to be correct direct on it, I want to pick what the work is. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I uh, know obviously st- stupidly, as if he's going to go, oh, well, Dave told me I'm not allowed to have puns, so that's that then. <laughs> obviously, he's the right. CEO, so Doesn't he goes really out like and that. thinks, uh, okay, well, I want some puns in, I'm not accepting that, how do we do it? So he sort of, he spoke to someone about putting some puns in. So right. then I sort of had the awkward thing of, I'd oh. had, say, two, a part in my office, I had the 200 rejects of people who'd bought in yes. different bits of work uh, that I'd rejected but they'd all ended up on the side of some cupboard that I was in my room yeah. so then the first I sort of uh, knew that that wasn't the end of it is uh, a young guy called Gideon Toads who was young at the time uh, he sort of poked his head around my office and then quickly whipped it back <laughs> and I thought God, what's he wrong God, I'm here and he and then he sort of looked again and then he walked off and then he come in, rifled through the pile and took his ads. Obviously he thought, fuck it, he's not in charge of it anymore, so I might as well get my rejected ads back. I might be able to get them through. Get through. <laughs> Which was awkward. Uh, so <laughs> then a couple of yeah, a couple of puns weren't in, you know. Uh, which was awkward. Did, w- in those days was it uh, was the work presented by you or was it presented by an account man? Uh, I think account men. I think account men mainly presented had the relationships with the economist. Um, I just wonder how the the, the, the politics of what to present and how it's presented at that point when you know that there's stuff in there that you're not especially happy with the approach on. That I'm that I wouldn't be happy. Yeah. With. Uh, I think it's just a, you know, I don't think he was, you know, he. I think you know, if I was being fair to Andrew, I'd say he. The Economist was arguably their most awarded campaign at the time. I wanted to change the formula by not having it just read and taking away the puns. So if you're CEO, it's fair enough to think, well, hang on, who's this? There's a commercial reason this that new I like guy this coming in, <laughs> having all these own views. So yeah. it's sort of fair enough in retrospect. But then equally, if you put on it, mm. y- you know, maybe they should sort of uh, and was it during give that, you a shot. I don't during know. that process that you... You found because uh, we so we did talk a little bit before coming on air about the so one of my favourites is um, where you subvert the genre. Yeah. Of course, of a poster. So I'll just I'll read it out for those who don't know this one. But it's a poster should contain no more than eight words, which is the maximum the average reader can take in in a single glance. This, however, is a poster for economist readers. So it's it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and is that more up your street? As uh, in, you know. No pun, clever. Oh, yeah, it's, a, you know, yeah. it's, and, it's and, good. It's a sort of playing with the genre. It's you, you, clever and stuff. You said you found it somewhere. Well, I think, um, well, there would always be, you know, the process of pinning eight ads on the wall. And you can imagine if you're sort of two days in, you've got things that people have been kicking around pre-brief. Mm. So you've not got the best stuff. But I thought, well, let's pin it up anyway and then replace it. That was the sort of system. Yeah. Um, and then there would always be the last day or two, you'd try and get people to have a, a, a big push. So there would be people like <coughs> Tim Riley, who talks about gaming the system and coming in late when yeah. he was on here. But, <laughs> so Tim, Tim Riley would always come up every single, <coughs> every single uh, quarter with good stuff. Yeah. You know? I, I, like, for example, I absolutely love Nature versus Nurture, which never gets mentioned. I think that's brilliant. I remember mm-hmm. him first coming in and thinking, that's brilliant. Yes. You know, it's like, how many is that? Nature versus nurture. Away we went. Five words. It's like a whole, yeah. you know, yeah. social history. Mm. It, it, you know, I thought, God, that's brilliant. Let's make that a night. That's the other thing is you'd have to pick some that are 96 sheets and some that are 48 sheets. I thought, God, that's a 96 sheet. Straight mm. away, we'll make the words as big as possible. That's brilliant. Yeah. And he would always come up with stuff that would be good every quarter, you know, whether he, yeah. you know, 
put it in late to game the system or whenever he put it in. He talks about holding stuff back yeah, just until right. that yeah. last minute. Yeah. Um, but there would always everyone's be, desperate. But there would always <laughs> be a, a panic, you know, and I would go round and try and uh, try and sort of get people going a bit. You know, I'd say to the, <laughs> uh, I'd say to the young, do you know Ben K? Yes. For example. Ben so ben I would get to say to some of the young teams, big like fan ben, of the show is always commenting on our yeah. posts. Yeah. Ben, you'll Hi be ben. on soon. Hi Ben. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I would go into people like Ben and Daryl and all of the younger guys there. And I'd say, how many economist ads have you got out? Knowing full well, they've not got any. Out. And they'd <laughs> say, no, unfortunately none have been accepted yet. We haven't got any run. I'd say, how long have you been in? They'd say three years, four years, whatever it be. Mm. So so. So every quarter, there's an open brief, four years. That's all those opportunities. I said, if I was a creative director outside, and I said, let's say you got fired tomorrow, and then you're doing interviews. I'd say, did you work on the account? Did you ever do any of those? Mm. Not having got any out, it's like a very damning thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I try and psych them up to say, come yeah. on. And then, ironically, they thought I was sort of warning them that they would be fired, but I was trying to say, <laughs> all right, yeah. But I was trying to say, you know, you'll move to another agency. You won't get this chance again. It's an open brief. There's yeah. like hundreds of them of one pencils. Mm. Make the most of it, you know. So sometimes they go, don't worry, I'm staying late. And I'm, I'm getting my... I think Ben said, I'm getting my sleeping bag. Uh, forget about <laughs> it. I'm here. I said, I'm not saying you should do anything. I'm just saying... Yeah. It's if you've been here that long and yeah. you've not got any out, you should really try and change that. But did you say no puns? Uh, possibly. <laughs> that was a T-shirt that I would yeah. always wear. Um, that's, a, that's a great um, piece of motivation, right? Uh, well, uh, the, the irony with Ben, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, is, is that he went, uh, it, and again, it's a long time ago, but this is my memory, is that he went, listen, I'm getting my sleeping bag. And, and I said, look, I'm not saying you have to stay here. I'm just saying, take the opportunity. It's there. We, we're a few short you know, it, it's a couple of words on a page, but make them good. But it's a real amazing opportunity. And then I went down to the studio in the basement, got the lift up, and then there was someone with a, you know, got in the lift when it opened at sort of half five, six. Mm. And there was someone with a, what do they call those coats? Big Parker coat, all yeah, done yeah. up with his bag. And it was Ben behind it. <laughs> and I said, night. And he went, night. Uh, and just told me he's going to say the night. But, um, but you would hope that the, the idea was that they'd think they'd get fired up and think, yeah, we've got an opportunity to to add to this and to win an award. What better chance do you got? And you, you know, you've got to make the most of it. I said, oh, I've been fired from places, and you really regret not taking certain opportunities. But so I don't know. Some would, and some wouldn't. But anyway, the so the thing with the long one is that on those rounds, I would say, you know, you'd have different things for different people. I'd say to people like Richard and John and other people, rather than saying, come on, you've got a real chance to <laughs> stay in the night, Richard, and don't go home. I would say, but what have you got? Have you got anything that you did previously that, that mm. you loved, but it didn't happen? Um, and I went into to Tony and um, uh, Mike and said, look, you know, you got anything that you've done that you really liked, that we could use, we could dust off and show? And uh, they said... We've got something that David Abbott really liked. So I said, well, that sounds good. Let's show <laughs> yeah. that. What was it? Uh, and they went, we've got this. And then they got, you know, they literally took it out of their bottom drawer. Right. And I said, well, that sounds great. What was wrong with that? And they went, well, there's too many words. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. So I said, oh, right. Well, let, let's, let me take it away with me. So then I thought, well, you can take out. But there was more words in it. Right. Not, not a tremendous amount. Well, I can't really remember. But maybe there was another six or seven words. Mm. I thought, well, if we cut it a little bit. Yeah. And we presented it, and uh, and we did that, and it got through. I think it won gold in camera yeah. posters, but you know it's sitting in their drawer. So it was so you would always be looking for other ways to think. How do you extract more out of someone, or mm. or something that that was great that could be changed and made better, or something did, that was rejected? Uh, we, you, we talked about Oatly earlier. There's, I can guarantee that the 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 guys who've written all those iterations of the Oatly posters have used that exact execution as inspiration <laughs> as the because amount of words that they well, sometimes they, use yeah. well because they're taking that kind of the the media insight or media planning yeah. insight and and subverting it into an advert in the creative process and well, I think that's what that's, that's what the often, line the sentiment is yeah, yeah that's right and that that's often what gets criticized about Oatly they say I, I sort of had one I can't remember what to say oh no I think it's far too self-reverential that's the way you put it and so people 
take against things that says this is an ad that blah 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 but you know it's good and clever it's clever that it you know i i like the fact that it's you know you're doing that thing where you're trying to get people to turn their head that it looks too long mm. and there's too many words you think that's a long one for the economist so you look at it more mm. and obviously it's for a reason it's not just long for no reason it's clever it's tied to the sort of essence of the thing being clever did you find it's fascinating hearing like did you find you were more suited to to doing that walking around and using a little bit of psychology with teams did you prefer that or did you prefer obviously you've written a lot as well or is it the same or is it do you have a uh, preference both really i don't yeah. know i mean it's 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 i really like um getting more out of people than they think they can do if you can do that sometimes so um so pushing them on or setting the bar or all those things or it's great to say to for mike and tony to have a scribble in their bottom drawer that all of a sudden is a is a gold and a thing that exists in the world and everybody sees it because it was yeah. really clever and it was not seen so all of those things are good and, and obviously writing them i mean i i um I was going to say I used to write them on the bus, but I used to drive in. So I've got, but I've got a memory of, <laughs> of, I don't know how that works, but I've got a memory of always after work travelling home. Perhaps I used to jot them down, I don't mm. know. But of just, because it was an open brief, of always trying to, because you think it's such an amazing opportunity. Yeah. So I was forever uh, making notes and trying to write them. And, and ironically, I, I, there was, um, I was thinking, well, what, what could we do graphically? So I've got a whole notebook full of different things a lot of which are jigsaw pieces, ironically. But I couldn't right. think, it seems so stupid now. I couldn't, I thought, what a great thing to have in red or in white out of red. Mm. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I thought it's a good shape and it's a good thing, but I couldn't uh, figure out how it could right, be used. Could be Having seen now the one with the jigsaw piece in it, you think, well, how could you, what other way could you possibly use it? Yeah, it's so seems so obvious, right? Yeah. Um, how did but that so come about? Be the jigsaw one. Yeah. Uh, well, again, you know, you would have uh, a lot of these open briefs, if you've ever sort of had one of the, you know, overseen one of those open briefs, you'd have a combination of people that would be uh, pestering away, bringing in things that are generally not very good, and they'd want to know, you know, they'd want lots of information, why it isn't, why it isn't. And then other people, like Tim, would come in and it would just be good, but he wouldn't be on your case all the time. Mm. And I think, um, you know, when I was sort of building up that, War. I can't remember. I think that was towards the end of when I was there. So, uh, you know, people would bring things in in person different times. Mainly they'd come in in person. Some some would try and sell you it, which was always slightly annoying. You know, when they'd give you a big spiel of why it's really good. <laughs> uh, I'd rather just look at it. But and then uh, I come in one morning and there was a little drawing of a uh, of the jigsaw head. Right. And I thought, oh, that's good. That's like that thing that I was trying to do that I couldn't make sense of. Yeah. But I think. It's interesting. The often the evolution of an ad from a scribble to a to a finished thing is the scribble people think, oh, yeah, not bad, and then you make it up, and it's like, actually, yeah, it's quite good, and then mm. it runs, and people go, actually, it's really good. It's never like, yeah, that's amazing, brilliant. It's always like it builds with each step that it gets made. So I thought, well, that's good. I thought I bet it looked good made up. So uh, I thought I'll put that one in as a visual one. I didn't think, wow, this is amazing I thought oh, it's quite mm. clever it's only yeah. you know uh, so then I made it up so so then there's a bit of art direction goes into you think so how do you do that so uh, th so the way to do that from memory I thought what I did is I got a jigs because what you don't want is proportionately that piece this is the technical bit yeah. that piece you've got to sort of visually imagine that if you that the other pieces could be in there. Yeah. So that is probably three or four high, but it mm. won't be three and a half or four and a half. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that will be so many across. Right. Nobody will know or give a shit about that, but it just feels like it's a real piece missing rather than you just draw that shape and yeah. plonk it down. Yeah. And it, you just sort of, it's a small little thing. Anyway, so I mocked it up and, you know, and then you mock it. And so the difference between that and the scribble and then that was made, although it's like you, there's no other way to do it in a way. You pin it up and then people go, oh, that's good. Who did that? Mm. I, go, I don't know. It was left there. Right. So I'd walk around the department. So after I'd sort of lived with it a bit, I thought, well, yeah, I like that. So then I'd go to Tim Riley, for example, I think mm. was, and then I just couldn't find who'd done it. 
And you think, what a weird thing, because it's really good. You know, I've mocked yeah. it up now. It's on my wall. Yeah, it's good. Who, why wouldn't anyone claim credit for it? Uh, so it's sort of slightly irritating, because I would have gone around lots of people mm. and said, is that jigsaw one yours? Uh, and then as time goes on, you you sort of like it more each day. You think, oh, that is really good. There's like yeah. no words. It's like different. It's clever. Uh, and nobody, <laughs> nobody would own up to doing it. Uh, and then eventually, um, Matthew Abbott came ambling in. I went, oh, oh, you like that one, dear? Uh, I said, yeah. What? He went, oh yeah, I did that. It was like very, very low key. It was like, oh, yeah, it was, but it so was like funny. could have been a week or two weeks after. It was, it was, it was a long time that we didn't even know we'd done it. I wow. locked it up and wow. you're thinking yeah. it was one of the cleaners who just kind yeah, of maybe it <laughs> put something on the cleaners. top of the pile, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think, yeah, I mean, it's. A, I, I just can't think how I couldn't have got there, uh, having been kicking around. With, what, what other thing can you possibly it sound, do? It sounds like perfect scenario. It landing on your desk and then you go, right, I know what to do with it now. You know, and then him, put, you know, it's quite well timed, isn't it? If he came in and, I don't know, overly sold it to you. Or Maybe. I mean, it's it was, yeah, it's obviously, uh, it's in, you know, I, I always love, it's like when I do my blog, I always love seeing the evolution of a sort of doodle to a finished mm. thing because they sort of, you know, n these things don't start as perfect. So seeing it as a scruffy little drawing and thinking, God, that's quite clever, and then mocking it up. It was like it was, t you know, it was 100% better. Did it um, did it sort of give way to like, because I'm now going, right, I'm remembering Brains, which is mm. the Tony Hardcastle one, then there's the Purple Patch, you know, did they follow that, which was teams going, right, no, nothing, just going to be one thing? Did they all come after that? Or was there like a little spate of those? Uh, I think there was, you know, I, I'd say that's sort of, ironically, that's sort of nearer to the keyhole, you know. And uh, I think, okay. you know, there would be, there would be, so I remember I was, I, I'd got an idea that I was really obsessed with, was going to be amazing. <laughs> that was just one thing, which was, which we managed to sort of run eventually, but I think the client resisted, resisted at first, which was, uh, it was like a brain with, Saturn rings around it, and it just said The Economist. So I thought, God, that's right. great. They're right. saying yeah. really, really clever, like a brain <laughs> like a planet, or that's a really graphic, unusual. Right. And yeah, nobody really took any <laughs> notice, or it didn't get. But at the time, I thought that's actually out brilliant. of interest. Yeah. Sorry, just jumping around a little bit, but yeah. you've, you've got me going now. Was or is there one or two in your drawer, and you're going, damn, why didn't that happen? Well, well, the I mean, economist, when you look at that, this, uh, uh, your. Well, Board. Oh yeah, that there, are there, well, there's stuff on the board. There, oh yeah, which, sorry. The, in the eight thousand well, years before, we were told about this through social media, which is uh, right. wonderful. So we had spoken. It's a good thing, social media. Yeah, I've heard yeah. it's excellent. So someone You'll said, never "Oh, catch you, on. yeah, <laughs> you've got to, um, you've got to see Dave dies. I don't know if you've called it this, the funnel diagram, or something." And we're going, "Oh, what's?" I think it was Tim. Tim right. said it. Okay. And so we were going, "Oh, that sounds amazing." So actually, yeah, should we try and talk about this for a little yeah. bit before you yeah. go? Because I'm um, again, this is like. I mean, it's sort of stuff we sort of know, but it's a fascinating thing for creative people, either in the industry or trying to get in about your process. I think it's just a tremendous should give us tremendous insight into the role of a creative director because there will be people out there who don't really understand this process that you yeah. go through. You were pointing at this, people would probably yeah. Know what um, this is. So <laughs> what we it describe is describe it, yeah. Yeah, and I can't remember whether this was my idea or someone said, "Oh, you should do that." So basically, what it is is because. We used to get in, again, to be honest, it's almost like a prototype of my, one of my blog posts, which is because we used to get in such a lot of ideas. And in some ways, it's obviously, it's a very subjective, you know, you get in, I'm looking there, there must be 200 yeah. ideas in, and, and above it, it says what the creative director sees. And there's probably 200 things underneath. Some are scribbled, some are made up, some are uh, got photos in. Um, because you get in so much, it'd be interesting to see that it is a funnel diagram. I didn't think of it as a funnel diagram, but as a big reception thing. So you see all of those ideas, and it says what the creative director sees. And then the next bit is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten that the, that the client sees. And they're going to buy eight, so it's not a bad ratio. Uh, so I would have gone through the 200, picked ten, right. and then the client, there should be eight there if I'm right. The client would buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, uh, to just see 
the process really and I think I mean I wish they still had it a few people have asked me about it probably people who used to work there when it was up on the board because it looked great at the time I didn't think yeah. to take any pictures or so there's a scruffy little I think Ben Kay had taken think ben, photos yeah. and I think Ben sent, it sent over, them yeah. so they're sort of just about just about you're able to sort of see them um, and you can see nature versus nurture away win as a 96 sheet I mean massive. it's a sort of it's a sort of version of Trotty's draw, draw 100 boxes. Yeah. You know, and then you'll get 10 decent, three quite good, and maybe one belter, you know. Yeah. And I think, you know, it'd be inter- I, wish it, I wish I had it uh, in high res. I'd be interested to know which ones now I thought were better than the ones <laughs> I picked. But, for example, I think there's uh, brains in there, which I'd rejected. And I rejected that because... Puns? No, it wasn't that. <laughs> it was the fact that uh, there was a Simon's Palmer ad that had brains uh, and it, at the time yeah well a few years before but I thought well, it's just like that brains one right and then a f- couple of years later it ran and it, it was at least in the book it might have a nomination think, was it yeah. nomination yeah. so um, I'd be interested in what else is in there that I've not picked but so it's you know so it's interesting seeing the process I mean seeing the energy and the stuff that goes into the seven or eight that run every quarter um, and did you produce that for your own sake, for a client's sake, for reception to show, look for at reception, the, yeah. for, to it's show like, how much work goes in. I mean, it was it was a kind of decoration for reception wall. Really, it was like a massive. Um, I'm trying to think, it was brilliantly graphic. Twenty, 20, 20 feet long. Or really, it's so what I love about it, and lo- so much of your work, it's so graphic and clean and simple, and it, you, you just can't not look at it. No, it's. Uh, I should ask them again if they, uh, because yeah. they love it. They love it on tapes from the. Period. It'd be there, but it's a useful thing. Just on the on the client side, um, you know, kind of tying these two things together, we talked about the jigsaw. But did you were you under any pressure from the client to kind of were there rules that they wanted you to put the logo on it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, not that I remember. I think uh, also if it was a if they ran one every quarter, we probably would have been. It probably wouldn't have been that one, but amongst. Eight, yeah. Amongst seven others, it runs as a campaign, it's and obviously, you see red, you know who's it, who it's for anyway. But yeah. uh, I don't know. It certainly ran like that. I don't remember any pressure on that. And then just to, in terms of what the what the client sees, so the client's yeah. looking at the. Was it ten, I think what the client there. rejected. The client rejected. Let's see if I can read it. Utter brilliance. I'm saying that, but I've put that in my. I've put that forward in my what the client sees as much <laughs> as I'm knocking it, but obviously you can only work with what you've got. Again, apologies to whoever wrote But that. so your relationship with that client, so it obviously it's being presented, you were saying it's been presented by the account man, but your relationship with that client, are you helping the client through that selection as well as the creative director? Uh, I can't remember. I think it was more, you know, I think it was more account man. I think it was, I think also the client had a tremendous amount of, ag- of um, trust in the agency, mm. you know, the mm. 10 years in, you know, they'd sort of. Um, my memory is it was yeah. Jackie was the, the client. Is is it probably would it have been more uh, at that time? You know, it would have been a more traditional agency account. People holding their hand yeah. and you know not dealing always with the unruly, difficult creatives. I mean, it uh, says says might. quite a lot, doesn't it? If you can run a piece of red print with a jigsaw yeah. piece missing. I mean, I don't know if I could think of another client possibly nike nike would do something that brave and that that a campaign like you've you've created for so long that people know yeah, like you say it's only on. possible because of the heritage yeah everyone exactly. knows all of this stuff. white and this yeah. Dirt. yeah but what you have to say i mean there's some in there that i really i think nature versus nurture i'll give that another plug for tim uh i like the one that we did e equals iq squared and never go blank at the crucial thingy Mm. And I liked the one that says you can barely see it there. I think it's ninety. It's a little diagram that's ninety nine percent perspiration and then one percent read the Economist. I think, which I think is good. <laughs> um, but that's come after uh, we've been told to go back to red. Yeah. So yeah. it's very interesting. Sort of trying to work within that. But uh, uh, there was one year I remember. Sorry, where I, I was looking through the campaign poster booklets last night, which Mark Denton said he know, he gave them all of, all did, of his yeah. to you, but I've still got mine if anyone wants some. Um, there was one period where you, I could feel a little bit like there was each one was using typography to make a point. So it's like avoid typecasting and it was just the type. And then there was something about a maze. And I'd felt like the yeah. hand of someone had gone, right, make them all visual. Yeah. 
and they would I mean I'd love to have them in my book but they did feel a little bit less witty and, yeah. and sort of like tonally though you know and I think it's like football isn't it or it's, you go through phases good, yeah, good form yeah, totally. and, yeah. and I think I mean was there one sorry just going back to it was there one or ones where you thought oh god why didn't that get through was it is there any or do you feel like everything did the good stuff most of the, it. I, I had a the only one that springs to mind uh, in fact there's a couple that spring to mind I, I don't necessarily think they're amazing but um, there was one that was just uh, it was all red and there was it was filled with little uh, various angles you know sort of 50 degree angle or two degree mm. angle so the whole thing was just little sort of diagrams of covered in angles yeah I don't know whether you get what that is that sort of so, yeah know all the angles kind of thing it's like a Great. what's that program that's uh, where yeah. they should what's it called uh, that quiz program where you have to guess the people would always questions it's what questions uh, uh, they would show you little visual things that you'd have to guess the same it's a bit like that I can't remember what it is but that would always no. be used to nice. have you uh, got a, did you do it up yeah I think I did that up um, and then there was one well. that was an L plate because that's red, obviously the L, and I think it was, it might have been ripped, I can't remember, but there was like an L plate mm. that was ripped, because that nice. was red, and the economist might have been in the L. Uh, there probably might have been some other, but there's nothing you think, God, if only that would have run. No, um, I mean, there's so, like you said, the, the figure you quoted earlier was, you know, I wish I'd been there in a way, because you could just, you know, there's no guarantee it, but it'd be something to go at. I remember at, at, at BBH, it, was the, it wasn't quite as good, but I think there was Levi's and Lynx, so there was yeah. a period where, we were saying to Rosie the other week, it was nearly the kiss of death if you were given the official brief yeah. because every other bugger would wait like yeah. Tim and Riley like. Yeah. yeah, and then just go bosh. And Hegarty would always love the new stuff because yeah. stuff would be kicking around for a few weeks. So um, I think there are less campaigns like this now, which is a shame um, because it, even now... So when we had Anna in last week, um, Anna Barolin from Mother, she said... We, had, we said, you know, what's your favourite ad or campaign of all time and she said it's the economist straight They're away really, yeah. and it was amazing and i was sort of i was going to ask you what can you sort of sum up why why it is that people love it so much because on paper it's just a bunch of headlines on a red background and yet somehow it captures everyone's imagination it's it, certainly in our industry and beyond um well, I don't know. I mean, it is clever. It's, it's clever. Most mm. of them are very clever. And, you you know, there's a, a quote that is, I can't remember who said it. It's like, if you, you know, the se secret to a good ad was that you have two plus two and you let people come up with the answer or something like that. Right. But, but the fact that some of them, you know, you see a red poster with a jigsaw piece, you think, what the hell is that about? You know, and you think yeah. about it a little, or E equals IQ squared, or, you know, some of them you have to think about. It's like... Um, you sort of um, you build in that cleverness and it's reward. It's like we did a color campaign for them, and it was all built around the fact that you knew people would interact with it. You would. We wanted to talk about that. Oh, okay. Am I cutting it? No, no. You're actually ahead? you're like perfectly segging into that actually. But, um, go. On. Well, it, I mean, that's a sort of. I did a blog on this one, but um, it's sort of you couldn't really do it for another brand, I don't think, because it's assuming that the people looking at the posters could be asked to figure out what it is. So, so the brief was The Economist is now available in colour. Yeah, right? which was a, a sort of weird a weird brief. I mean, it's I should it's funny, I, uh, I should thank Tim Riley for this because at the time, yeah. me and Sean had done lots of campaigns that it seemed to us that had three things. You know, we'd done an Economist campaign that was a print press campaign with that. We'd mm -hmm. done the Budweiser and something else, something else, like these sort right. of... Fallon McGilligan type three things. It's a sort of avoid to avoid writing headlines, really. Or <laughs> um, anyway, so we'd had this idea of this. We'd done so many ideas on colour because, firstly, we thought, you know, the the, the account men who briefed us were saying, "God, it's really exciting. The Economist is going to be in colour, and we've got to do a campaign for it." Hmm. And you think, who cares? You know, you've spent all that time saying it's for really intelligent people, and. Uh, <laughs> And God, you're really clever, and you're really smart, and you know what's what. And then you go, oh, great news, guys! You're going to get colour pictures of Gordon Brown, and yeah. the diagrams Belter. will have full <laughs> colour blue in them. Knock yourself out, you know. Um, so it seemed a bit weird that they'd 
were so excited about it. Obviously, they're excited about it because they could run colour ads and make more money. We didn't yeah. really think of that at the time. But uh, we're just thinking of it from the consumer's point of view. So we we did, I think we did seven campaigns on this of doing it in, in various different ways. And most of them, because we felt like it was a sort of slightly stupid thing for the economists to be <laughs> talking about. I mean, if you want to go in colour, fine. But if you want to do, uh, donate your you know, quarterly ad budget to tell everyone. It seemed weird at the time. I don't know yeah. why. So most of them took the piss out of it, of it being in colour, or it was very, sort of tongue-in-cheek. And the thing that ended up uh, making sense for us is you go, well, you don't say great news are in colour. We just sort of do it backhandedly. You, you show a clever thing, which is you have there's three squares. So there's a pink square, a grey square, and a green square. And then there'd be a word next to it, Next to the pink one, it would say pound. Next to the grey one, it would say vote. Next to the green one, it says peace. And it says just the economist now in colour. So mm. if that was for lots of other brands, I think I've no idea what that means. But you kind of could be pretty sure that if it's for the economist, that people would think, what's that then? Oh, I get it. Pink pound, grey vote, green peace. Right. Now in colour. And it's like just you're playing a little game with them because you know the people looking at it are smart and they like these little mensary type games yeah, and it yeah. just makes it a bit more interesting but also it, it, it what i liked about it eventually after tim had said no you should run it it's ridiculous um is that um is it was wasn't bigging it up too much it was sort of making you aware yeah. of it but it was almost saying look you're probably not bothered but anyway we're in color but just so that you keep you busy there's a little game you, so it seemed tonally quite a good way yeah. of saying it did you because looking at it did you obviously this is after the venn diagram thing yeah so was there a bit of a fear inside you thinking, oh, God, is it going to be like that again? But, uh, Not really, because no. it was in colour. So, it, so it, you, were, you, you were a bit more legit. I, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, there was a campaign before that that I, at the time, preferred, uh, which was, uh, I don't know how to begin to describe it, but it was basically, it was sort of like a, the four colour plates were overlapping, overlapping slightly right. funky. Yeah. As if the red but with other colours, so it's sort of black. Yeah. And we'd we'd made up fake headlines that justified colour. So it was things like um God, what are those colourful sweets? Like Smarties right. truck crashes into <laughs> rainbow thingy whilst something. You know, yeah, all yeah, very, yeah, very yeah. colourful things in it, so yeah. the economist now in colour. So we just made up all these silly right. very colourful brilliant. news incidents, which brilliant. we much preferred, but they That sounds brilliant. Yeah, which we really like that, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't but go for it. But not knowing uh, that, and having obviously slightly sadly absorbed ads over the last two or three decades, I remember seeing this again and going and thinking, it's great, it's just so simple, the tone is so economist, it's just a, sort of like less is more. Uh, everyone knows you, you know, what you're doing. It just felt... Well, I think in retrospect, there's probably more economists this campaign which ended up running than the previous one, although we much prefer... The, the previous one seemed funnier, so we sort of gravitated towards that, but we had to mm. keep doing it and doing it. But Tim said, no, you should run it. Why are you not running it? And we were a bit blasé, thinking we've got loads of those. Sounds like we should get ones. Tim Riley back in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so although it was generally an open brief and you get the occasional brief, was it was outdoor always on the agenda? I mean, there's a, they obviously have a great love affair with the poster and the yeah. press ad. I mean, they used to do everything. We did commercials for them and yeah. press ads and everything, really. But outdoor was their, their most famous stuff. I mean, it is the most famous, you know, arguably the most famous medium. And and the most awarded as well. For For them, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So I wonder why it was they chose outdoor billboards. Well, because uh, because basically the reason that they advertised, as far as I understand, it was 10 years before my time, but they used to, uh, their goal was to get The Economist on media men's, media people's schedules. so rather than going in campaign or different magazines, if you make it public and it appears like you're talking to the public, it feels like a bigger. Yeah. Um, it feels bigger than it is, and it feels more public. You're sort of it's not like a little niche magazine. So yeah. they, they decided to. I think Abbott decided to, to say, could we make the case to go on outdoor? I think he'd spotted that it was like. A, it's funny how these things work, but he'd spotted that it was. That the logo was poster shaped, thought, well, yeah, maybe we could do posters that are very graphic and branded like that. Yeah, uh, and then said to the media guy, Ken, you uh, could we make the case that it would be better to go on outdoor than on 
uh, in magazines, possibly even trade magazines, I don't know, uh, which he's, he, he did. And then they did that. So it was sort of aimed at media men. And the fact that it became famous, and it was certainly right. famous with their industry, made it seem like a much uh, bigger and less serious kind of magazine. I mean, yeah. that's the, the good thing about it as well, is that, you know, the economist can be very dry, but because the ads are sort of sharp and witty and, and mm. whatever it makes it seem more accessible and bigger so it really kind of uh, helped them yeah, they ended yeah. Up on posters. but they would do a ton of stuff yeah, yeah. i mean they're still we push we'll wrap it up in a minute i think but we we you know thankfully we spotted those ones the other day on the um old street roundabout and they were, they were great i mean they i don't know if they're as as amazing as what some ones we've talked about today but certainly it was it was nice to see them back wasn't it Oh, on digital as well. Yeah. It didn't jiggle around either. There's no jiggling. There was no, no steam or, or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just about that though. So uh, having having left um, AMV and and left the account, do you th- what do you think of the stuff that went afterwards? That you know, they, they went controversial, of, Dan. Well, they went through a bit of a quiet period on oh, yeah. on outdoor as well. I mean, the, you know, the, it's almost like. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's it's odd. The you know the new ones, uh, sort of all right. You know, I mean, I don't. It's very difficult because the Economist campaign probably ran for fifteen, twenty years, mm. and what happens is people seem to remember, you know, twenty, thirty, maybe, which is not many. That's almost like one every quarter. If it's probably not even that. I can't do the maths. And so, but you know, if they if you if there was one very good one out of every eight over that period, then you've got. Whatever that is, For, mm. you know it's. But the odds are not amazing. But you sort of tend to gang them all up and think, God, that amazing Economist campaign, mm. everything was brilliant, and it wasn't. There was loads of ones that were that were ropey. Um, so the problem, so it's difficult if you if you start reintroducing it because you've got four, and it's probably, you know, they're probably the same standard on average as they would have been previously. Mm. Mm. They look rubbish, unfortunately, because they've decided to. Ditch the font, go with the uh, font from the masthead, presumably because they think it's better branded, which is unbelievable. You've got a big red poster with a white line in it. You don't need to worry about the font. Mm. So they've decided to make it the same font, which is pointless, and make it really small for some reason. It uh, looks quite fragile. Yeah, there's no reason. Why would you not make it really big? I think mm. Paul Belford online, you know, re art directed it like an economist right. ad, which seems like a good thing to do. Uh, so he'd made the line really big, and you know, oh, we used, see that. That's a great. Uh, that's a re- I mean, the difference that. is like night and day. I mean, he's, it probably took him, you know, seven minutes, but mm. he used the right font, yeah. broke the headline in two so that it was massive, and then he put the uh, one line logo, the Economist, next to each other rather than the stacked the Economist, and all of a sudden, they improved by like fifty percent. Um, so and they stood out more. Why? Uh, I can't believe Abbott Mead would say, can't we make the font like your masthead and make it small? Yeah. So presumably that's Things some sort changed. of internal pressure on branding, which is it's the most best branded camp- poster campaign in history. It's really interesting he- hearing you talk about just that detail. And I think we're going to, when we do part two, so not today, but I think when we talk to Dave again, I, I, I really want to talk to you about how... So not your yeah your tips or the little rules you live by. Just hearing that is really interesting. I remember I, I've got a scrapbook and one of the oh, things well. I kept. Don't just, look at that before, page. Just before you get to that, just just want to wrap up on exactly what you were just saying there, Dave, yeah. Because I think actually you've hit the nail on the head. We talked about how they kind of having left, they seem to have taken a break from outdoor. They didn't have the ten years of heritage that they had when you when you joined the account, um, and so. When they come back to do stuff again, they didn't have that heritage to rely on. So there is probably a bit more pressure on maybe the clients. Yeah, saying, well, stack the logo and can you use my yeah. corporate font. So it, I think it's like they probably suffered a bit from the break from from. Well, there's great, been a big break, break right? A lot yeah, break. I mean, it feels like obviously they went into. We worked with the economists at Dyer Hunt, we were for a bit when they were doing the black campaign with all the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they did that for a bit, which seemed like it wasn't as good as the previous stuff, uh, and then they seemed to disappear off the radar uh, completely. But I mean, I, I it, it, what was the question again? No, it's just it's just really an observation that they you know you had the the ten years of it um, 
and building up that building yeah. up the brand and I mean my guess would be internally if I'm to predict what was happening at Abbott Mead you've obviously got really good people there but if it's one of Abbott Mead's most famous accounts so if they go we're going to do some again we can only do four I would imagine there'd be all sorts of people involved and those sort of things end up being let's not get it wrong rather than mm. you know so me turning up saying right it's going to be Venn diagrams it's not that is sort of fine to be so cavalier 10 years in when you've had that consistency yeah. but if you restart it up after a break of um, whatever it may be it might even be 10 years nobody wants to yeah. try something too different because it's just too risky and also they could go we're pulling that we tried to bring it back but we're not so you sort of have to go back to the uh, red but well, maybe it's which the... idea it is yeah. Yeah. They've, th no, people will do what the general ad was at the time which is a bunch of words it's just a shame they look like mm. they do. But well, I think all I was alluding to was that I ripped out this thing you wrote about craft oh God, and what did I write? stuff. Well, I tell you oh, okay, what. Okay, is that for another day? Let's say just, it for another day. What's the that man's ass on the other? Page oh, actually, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, a friend of mine launched a show called Dirty Fan Mail, and his his sister's a porn star, and he wrote um, a show about it. Okay. The um, he ran her fan mail club. So okay. I'll so tell you about that. Later. We'll, we'll have that in part two, <laughs> and we'll also take a picture of that page so you can see. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, because I think it was a good shout to do it. Um, just on the economist, uh, because well, just because there's so much to go out. I'm sure we could have more, but uh, um, it's been absolutely fascinating hearing. Yeah, good. No, so it's been thank you so yeah. much for. Can't believe for that. we've yeah. stretched all uh, that time into just the economist, but yeah, yeah that's brilliant. Thank good. you. And thank uh, you. Fingers good. crossed for the pitch. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We'll see. You know what? I just remembered. Go on. We forgot to ask him about your line. Oh. If he ever saw it. I imagine it's be pretty close to the top of his pile. Well, it's a pile of something. Yeah, <laughs> he was very good, wasn't he? He was. It was just a delight. Yeah, I mean the the second part of this is going to be great when we start talking about all the other work. Because yeah. if we can get that deep on the Economist and hear all about this, stuff yeah, and I think there. he's sort of somebody who relishes in you know a bit like Mark the kind of the depth of you know stories and background. And I mean, I had no idea about the Venn diagram stuff. I thought. That was just another direction they were yeah. going to look at. But him saying, no, that was what we were going to do. We were going to change it from red to that. I'm like, wow. So so uh, what about a competition then? So this is a two-parter. So we didn't get to our usual questions with um, uh, yeah. with him on uh, on his favorite billboard and of all tips, time. So, tips and stuff. Um, let's run a competition on our social. Right. Um, so listeners, the job this week is to tell us what you think Dave Dyes favorite billboard of all time is going to be mm. uh, so comment on our posts on twitter at get btb on instagram at get behind the billboard um or and don't forget to listen and subscribe on uh, on on the web on so, the interweb and can it be uh dave dye's favorite poster or could we choose one of dave dye's favorite posters oh let's do both yeah everyone submit dave dye's best poster and then everyone yeah shout out what you think dave dye's no favorite ice. billboard. I know what time. mine is already. Got it. Go on. Adnams. Mm. I framed them and put them on my wall at home. That's how sad I am. <laughs> They're still there. Yeah. No, I actually went up to the, this morning. I went upstairs. They weren't there. They've been replaced with something else. So sorry. Pictures of Bieber. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> no, it's probably uh, pictures of Cantona and Alex Ferguson knowing you. No, I'm more cultured than that. <laughs> 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 More culture than that. More culture than that. More culture than that. More culture than that. More culture than that.